I'm joined today in this edition of the Business of People with Colleen Heidinger, President of 43 North and also Buffalo Business First Power Woman. Congrats on that. <laughs> Colleen, thank you. thank you so much for joining. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. I really appreciate it. As we were chatting about during our um, kind of pre-recorded conversation, I know that you're juggling a lot and I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Um, so I thought we'd start today, Colleen, on a slightly different um, kind of topic than, than I normally talk about with, with other leaders, because I think you have a really interesting perspective on the idea of work-life um, balance in that you have a yoga studio, I believe, um, for which you seem quite passionate about. Um, so you balance that personal ambition, that personal interest along with quite a, a large role leading the 43 North organization. And I am curious how you've approached that dynamic of pursuing a project of passion with um, quite a prominent and um, large role leading um, the organization of 43 North. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot, right? But I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. I, I have never been a person to... Um, find joy in sitting still. And honestly, prior to coming home, I spent my entire career in um, film and television and honestly left because I, I didn't appreciate and didn't love what I did in terms of, I don't watch television and I fall asleep at the movies to this day. I mean, I've tried really hard over COVID to like get into a series and, you know, had my brother come set up the whole Netflix thing and I still, it's just not what I do. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's, they, they've allowed me to, stay sane in a way and that the yoga really helps me um, kind of sidetrack myself for those pieces of time during the week that I spend working on that. And it re-energizes me. I mean, it's amazing how I feel after I teach a class or see the impact I'm having on people's lives, both mentally and physically. So it's really been a gift. And I will say it's, it's a result of working with entrepreneurs. I mean, I, I, um, you know, took on this project in Larkinville you know, having been asked to, to provide something for the community on the first floor. And then, you know, the, the expectation was, would be that I'd live there, which was always the plan. But the first floor was kind of this kind of, um, not a priority. And we kind of thought, we'll figure it out. We're going to make it vanilla and that it's hardwood floor and white walls. So I could rent it to a hairdresser. A, we could have pop-up shops. Like it was never really meant to be mine. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, I led and, and created the Ignite Buffalo program in, in partnership with Facebook. And it was like the, the inspiration I needed and impeccable timing that just allowed me to say, you know what, I've got to give this a shot. Like, this is my space. My dad has done all the work. I have an idea, right? The year before I had gotten certified in yoga, um, having spent a lot of time out in New York and the Hamptons with our teachers. And I thought, well, I've got to give it a shot. So that's yeah. where it came from. And it's a result of just being surrounded by brilliant people that take risks for their you know, livelihood. And mm -hmm. it's so inspirational to see, um, you know, the stories of those that we surrounded ourselves with both through Ignite and, and always with 43 North. So yeah, it, it's been a lot, but I, you know, as I said, I wouldn't have it any other way. And they, and they both mm -hmm. feed off each other in terms of the differentiate, um, differentiating work and kind of level of creativity that one takes versus strategic thinking the other takes. Mm. And, it, and it seems to just kind of mesh quite well. That's really, really interesting. Yeah, I think, um, I know a lot of people have kind of, and me included very much so, have been taking a step back to, to really focus on and understand what their values are. And for you, it sounds like having um, prioritizing balance and making time for, for yourself, but also allowing for creativity, innovation, in your personal life. And I know, um, I think a lot of people are in that zone of trying to figure out what the appropriate balance is to make sure they're fulfilling their personal values, but also fulfilling professional obligations and commitments. So I appreciate that. And I wonder what perspective it's given you as you start to, you enter into more of this management leadership role where you're, you know, managing people, how you've been able to um, incorporate the, you know, the importance of finding balance both professionally and, and personally when you, when you lead people? Do you have people on your team? Do you encourage that? I guess what's the messaging around that to your team to make sure that things are getting done professionally, but they're feeling fulfilled personally? Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, everyone has their thing, right? So if it's kids, if it's rehabbing or building a house, if it's, you know, side projects or, or recently found new passions, it's, it's always encouraged to, you know, take, whatever time you need to find that balance, particularly with COVID, right? We're in a little bit of a different situation. So, you know, sure, go for the run midday or like today, I 
encouraged everyone to go work outside, right? It's 73 and humid. You know, the weekend's going to be, or, or not humid today, but you know, like mm -hmm. we have to take advantage of these days, right? We're going to be locked up inside in another two months if we're lucky. Um, and so to enjoy and take the mid afternoon walk and, mm -hmm. you know, go get on your Peloton for a half hour and really break up the day because folks do know that when you take a break and step away, you come back stronger. And so whatever that might mean, if it's going to play with the kids or going to bake your own bread or going to do a yoga class, like that's, that's always been encouraged um, from my leadership downwards. And then particularly with mm -hmm. COVID, it allows for a little bit more flexibility, which has been incredible um, mm -hmm. for the team. And we, we've yeah. always been, um, I mean, we have unlimited vacation, right? So we, we try to encourage balance um, to the point of which I, in that there's a comma that says it's expected that you take a minimum of two weeks of vacation right so mm -hmm. to encourage the team we're on and when we're on we're we're in it you know um and so time away is critical to have this team at 100 percent. so they know that and they know i expect it mm -hmm. well props to you for living it too because i think it's one thing for leaders to say and to like champion you got to take breaks you got to but it's another thing to like see a leader doing it and to actually embody what they're saying so kudos to you for for doing that because I'm, I'm sure it's hard for you to, to break away but you clearly understand the importance and value on that so I think that probably does does uh, makes a big impact on, on your team having their leaders actually practice what they preach so that's awesome so um, I want to shift just a little bit um, we know like everything else currently COVID's affected you know current current activities and that's no different for for the 43 North competition you had a how to repivot um, a little bit and reevaluate what you're doing this year, but I expect that it's given you an enormous opportunity to, to refocus and to, to innovate because that's the core of what 43 North is all about. So I'd love to just get a little insight and a peek under the hood about how you move forward from the fact that this year's competition isn't happening, but what that's allowed you to do because I know for so, so many um, the effects of, you know, of COVID feel intense in the moment, but once I take a step back, it's provided enormous opportunity to innovate change and, and create positive momentum. Yeah, I mean, I'll say it was a really tough decision, right? And we, we I worked very closely with the board and, um, you know, but it's the right decision for right now. Yeah. And it's just due to the level of uncertainty we, have, uncertainty we have in a variety of different areas, right? The health sure. of our people and the state and the country, as well as the business climate, um, you know, it just, it just didn't make sense right now for us to do that. So what did make sense and it's, it's been working is that we've pivoted our entire team to be hands-on essentially what I'm calling like consultants for our companies. So every expertise that we have on our kind of bench, that is my team has now been, you know, transferred to very hands-on consulting work for the companies. So they, we have a whole process that was created, um, for them to submit their requests. And then we go deep. Um, and bring in the, the right team members that is needed for those situations. So it's been interesting. I mean, the, the kind of silver lining in all of this is how well the portfolio is doing, right? There's been mm. series A's and B's closed throughout COVID. There's been a ton of hiring um, bursting yeah. literally through the walls at Seneca One. Yeah. Um, you know, and we had a really successful demo day last week with over 200 investors on, like very interested in, in investing in Buffalo and our, in our company. So yeah. It's not exactly what we planned, but it's certainly still we're, we're full on our mission in terms of attracting and retaining and creating jobs in Western New York um, yeah. you know, with, with no trouble. So different types and, and approaches to the way we work day to day, but certainly at the end of the day, it's, it's we're still full on our mission. Yeah, no, that's exciting. And I, and I feel that same sense and I get that same sentiment just from reading and just being you know, tangentially involved in the, the startup community in the sense that, um, you know, maybe in some, in, in some ways when you ne investors maybe never normally would have been open to like jumping on a video call. Now that that's common practice, like what great opportunity is that for, you know, to, to be able to connect people in ways we normally never would have. And I, um, it feels like there's a lot of energy happening at Seneca One, um, there's been great uh, publicity around just, you know, the constant um, construction and, and uh, you know, evolving kind of build out of that of that prominent building. So that's really exciting. So I think you and your team have done a good job to create create the image and not even the image to just share the story that there's still activity going on despite like this public event that everyone was was really used to. So that's that's super exciting. Um, so tell us, are people moving into the to the Seneca One? You, your team is. Are they there? 
Yeah, I mean, so I opened um, in conjunction with the governor's, you know, when he said it's appropriate to open doors again. To right, us. right. And, 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 you know, right. We, we are an organization and an ecosystem that thrives on collisions. And so, you know, safe safety always first. But the more we can allow those and create environments for those to happen it, it is the more the better, right? So yeah. even clearly a reduced amount, but, mm-hmm. you know, the teams with very strict guidelines are have been able to go back in since early June and Mm -hmm. you know, the energy is returning. I will say the um, (laughs) being able to watch blue Jays games uh, has certainly been (laughs) something that I think will bring more back maybe a little faster than they wanted, but um, yeah, we're we're getting back there and it is, it's an incredible opportunity. I mean, of course we're the first ones into Seneca one. It's still some days you're walking, you know, through construction and whatnot, but once you arrive on our floor, it's an oasis in the sky above Buffalo. And I, and I said in an interview, uh, earlier in the year, it was like, now is the time that literally every window you look out, our city is shining. The lake is stunning. Huh. Canal sides bustling down, to, you know, the whole thing. So yeah, we're open um, as companies desire with all the protocol and the energy, I, I can start to feel it again. You know, and M&T is coming in right behind us. Odoo is, right. you know, knocking, their, their walls are being put up. So, so we'll be back certainly. Um, and and yeah. probably sooner than later. Yeah, that's exciting. And there's, uh, there's no question about that. I think um, people are energized by the idea that innovation comes out of crises and people, I think, especially in Buffalo, where there's like this gritty, just get it done kind of mentality are really latching onto that. So that's, um, that's fantastic. So um, this was great, Colleen. I know it probably feels short and brief, but I really just wanted your perspective, A, that we talked about originally of what you're doing to kind of lead your team. And it sounds like, in short, you're leading like, by example, which is, I think, the best thing leaders can do, um, and really being authentic about your leadership style, which I think is is incredibly important. And then to hear that there's still a ton of exciting activity, despite, you know, just the event being canceled, which we all know why, and um, a ton of exciting activity within the startup community, and that people are really latching on to this idea of innovation. I appreciate your per- your perspective on that, and I'm. Um, Wish you the best of luck as you continue like so many other leaders just to navigate and take it day by day because I think that's the best thing you can do right now is just wake up, be grateful for what you have, figure out how you're going to tackle the day and move on. I think that's the perspective I've tried to keep and within select one that sounds like the same for you. So thank you so much for sharing that. As I mentioned earlier, hopefully I'll see you next week um, during our um, Leadership Buffalo tour. And um, when we can get coffee, maybe we should. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to.